so you know, you you make eighty thousand dollars at the age of twenty three, which is a ton of money, and that's back in nineteen eighty six. Eighty six, yeah. Uh, and then uh, you get hired by this big firm, and your job is to take all these investors out and show them a good time. You were telling me at one point you had a three hundred thousand dollar allowance a year for entertainment. Three hundred thousand dollar expense account, and that include <laughs> included my travel, my hotels. I've you know that's a lot of money today, but back then that's an insane yeah, amount of yeah. money. And so you're out there entertaining these people, and uh, these are the movers and shakers in the world that you want to be a part of. And so you thought you would like to join them, and you wanted to be a part of that group. And this is what they were doing, so there's got to be something to it. Yeah. And so you take into it, but uh, after you do that, you realize it doesn't align with your core beliefs, and you start to feel bad. Yep. And beat yourself up. Yep, it's a painful, painful process. So then you do what a lot of addicts do. Rather than stop and address <laughs> the situation, Yeah. Yeah. You compound it. You make the next reactionary choice, and that is compounded with something else. You yeah. Don't, you don't pump the brakes, you hit the gas. Yeah, right. Instead of, you know, I've learned over the years that, you know, between stimulus and response, you got to make a decision. And I could have corrected it, you know, but I continue to beat myself up. I'm like, oh, man, I've drank now. I, I, I can't tell anybody. And see, then I hit it. And hiding that pain, and, and I would travel, so I'd only do it when I'd travel. I'd go home to my wife and my two beautiful daughters, and um, they didn't know. So now you're living a dual life. Right. I mean, that... So which, you, see, how, see, you can feel the pain. I, no, I, I, no yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I get it, because I've it. lived a dual yeah. life. You know, one persona on TV and then one persona at home. You know, I was yeah. on TV entertaining the masses, and then I was sitting at a home on the deck by myself, drowning my sorrows in a 12-pack of beer. Yeah. You know, yeah. and wondering who was who. And and when we started this podcast, I know who I am and I am now, but I didn't know back then. Uh, and I knew who I want to be. So you're living a dual life. You're on the road. You're hiding your secret life from your family. And, Just creating all kinds of inner chaos. And what does that look like? I mean, does your does your wife at home ever wonder? Uh, you know, does it start? Does it spiral out of control quick? I'm sure she. Um I'm sure she guessed a couple of times that, you know, but she was, she was such a, she's a beautiful lady, beautiful mother to my kids. But, um, I, I don't think she knew, but then again, you know, as addicts, we think we are really hi doing a good job hiding, but she, she, she may have, she just didn't say anything to me. So this went on for years and I'm thinking, how do I unravel this sucker? Cause it's get, just getting worse and worse and worse, you know, and by outward appearances, I, had it all together you know i had the the lifestyle all the cars the boats the motorcycles um the definition of worldly success was was right there and in fact share a little story with you people used to come up and say hey curtis you don't quite seem happy but you've got everything and they would look around you know beautiful home beautiful wife two beautiful daughters i've got all the material things i've got a great job I travel, I can do anything that I want, but I wasn't, I didn't have that inner peace. And I would say to him, I'd say, uh, for example, Casey, I'll tell you what, you come to my house on Saturday. We're going to go into the garage. I had a Harley Davidson safe with titles of ownership to my, to my vehicles and Hummers and things like that. And I want you to bring me one thing and it's not money. And we're going to go in that garage and you can pick anything that you want. And I'm going to give you the title. But you have to give me one thing. Okay. I'm in. Yeah. You in? Yeah. So they would show up to my house and they'd say, hey, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the white, white Hummer. We'd go over to the, you know, role play going through the, to the, to the safe, take out the title and I'd go to hand it to him and say, Casey, here you go. And then pull it back and I would say just want one thing and he'd look at me and say what what is that i'd say inner peace and that's what i'd lost and you know that feeling yeah. when you lose that inner peace you are in chaos you are completely out of control and talk about you know you know yourself now you have that inner peace i can see it in you you know i i I've only seen you, you know, handful of times, but you you have a different look to you. That's that inner peace, I believe. And nobody can give you 
inner peace. Only you can find it. Well, one one author of inner peace for me is is my higher power, God. So that's one way that I rose above rock bottom. <laughs>